everybody, Steve here. Welcome to my third video in my series of how to build an FPV racing drone for the absolute beginner. This is video number three. If, uh, if you do not have a clue, then it's best that you go back and start uh, the playlist over again. Video one is going to help you make good decisions when buying things. Buying things that work well together. Being able to make wise decisions and differentiating between two items that may look exactly the same. It's a very complicated hobby. I know a half an hour is a long time to watch a video, but I think it's a small price to pay when it could end up saving you hours, if not days, waiting for new parts to arrive when you realize that you've purchased the wrong parts. Uh, in video two, we did this. We got that far. We got our power distribution board on and uh, our frame halfway together. Got everything soldered up, and in this video, we are getting ready to solder up the flight controller, but we don't want to spend all that time soldering up the flight controller if it doesn't work. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the software. Okay, so we've got to make a decision as to what firmware we want to flash to our flight controller. Chances are your flight controller came from China and uh, whatever firmware is on it is several, several iterations old. So the decision here is do we go with clean flight or do we go with beta flight? So they're both open source and beta flight is actually a fork off of clean flight. And from what I understand, clean flight's latest revision is 2.5. And apparently clean flight is supposed to be the latest stable, no issues software. Whereas beta, as the name implies in the software world, beta is kind of a testing ground. Beta flight is more of a testing platform where the community is, is generating a lot of feedback for the developers and they make improvements as they go along. So the decision here is which one do we use? So you can use clean flight if you want. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using beta flight. Both pieces of software are very, very similar. So if you watch this video in beta flight and you decide to still use clean flight, you won't have any issues. The only issue that will affect us in this video series is the fact that because we're using PWM, beta flight no longer supports PWM. They stop support for PWM at version 4.0.0. So that's what we're going to be using. All right, so we've decided on beta flight. So let's go ahead and get it on our computer. First thing I'm gonna do is do a Google search for beta flight download. The first one is the Chrome extension. I'm gonna bounce down to the second one, which is the GitHub, and I'm gonna click on that. This way I'm getting the very latest version. As of right now, if you do the Chrome extension, it's gonna install 10.4 and you're gonna to have to come back here and install 10.6 anyway. I have Windows, so I'm gonna click on the EXE and I'm gonna save the file. And the file's been saved, so right now I can just go ahead and click on it. Select yes, and next, and agree, and install, and now wait. All right, so I sped up the film, but that'll take about five minutes. And then I'm going to go ahead and click finish, which is going to run the software. And here we are. If you go up into the upper right hand corner and you click on uh, COM1, you're just going to see COM1 and manual selection. Just for kicks, I'm going to try to plug in my flight controller. And as you can see, my COM changed to COM5. That is because I have previously downloaded these drivers and uh, downloading the drivers is not as intuitive as it should be, so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect, and I'm gonna walk you through the process of downloading the drivers. The first driver is the CP210X. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. All right, it's got an error at 404, not to panic. Let's just open up another window, and let's do a Google search for CP210X. I believe this is the link that we just visited, so let's visit this link instead and go ahead and click on this. You're gonna to wanna to download the software for whatever uh, platform you have. I'm Windows 10, so I'm just gonna click on that one. And I'm gonna save the file. All right, it saved it to a folder for me right here. It's a zip file, so I'm gonna right click on it, extract all. 
extract. There's a folder. I'm gonna click on it. Now, I have a 64-bit processor, so I'm going to click on this one and say yes, and it wants to. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and click on next, and mine went super fast because I already have the driver installed. Yours is probably take a minute or so, but it's pretty much that simple. So let's move on to the next one. Unfortunately, the next one is not so simple, but stick with me here. Let's go ahead and click on here. And you're going to click on get software and you're going to click on get software again and you're going to accept the terms and then you got to fill out the darn form and you're going to say that you've you read and accept and all that kind of stuff and then you're going to hit download so all that's going to do is get you an email so we're going to wait a couple minutes for the email to arrive all right so you're going to get your email and you're going to be happy about it and you're going to click download now and you're gonna get stuck in this infinite loop. So click X, really quickly hit Get Software, hit Get Software again, accept it, and instead of doing this form, click on Login Register, and create an account. Now you gotta, and you gotta click that you've read the terms, blah, 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 hit Register. Thank you for registering, now we're gonna wait for an email. Now this is a different email from before. This is a please validate uh, your email address. So we're gonna say validate now. And we're gonna do a secret question. And you get to pick a password. And then hit submit. And now in the upper right hand corner it says hi your name. And now we can finally hit get software. Hit get software. Hit accept. And hit download save the file bring in my downloads folder it's another zip file so I'm gonna right click and I'm say extract all and extract and now I've got a folder that I can click on and I've got to be very careful to pick your pick the one that makes the most sense well I don't see Windows 10 here so I'm just gonna go with the latest I'm just gonna go with Windows 864 bit and click on it yes And next, 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 install, and it's ready to use and I can say finish. Check for program updates. That was a ton of fun, wasn't it? All right, let's get Zadig. This one will be easier. All we need to do here is come down here and click on it. Do save file. And it saved it in my downloads folder. It's an executable, so I can just click it from here. Say yes. Sure. All right, so if you're looking at this screen right now, what I'd like to have you do is plug in your flight board. And if all goes well, yours will look like this with a blue light and a little red blinky light. So now go back to the screen and we're going to go ahead and hit the button for connect. All right, it says non clean flight beta flight firmware is not supported. Except for an all right, so let's go ahead and close that. And uh, down here, if you get this screen, um, I'm just going to write down, I'm going to type in version. All right, so it's telling me it's it's a clean flight SP Racing F3 version 2.5. And yours may vary depending on where your board came from. But let's go ahead and at this point, let's dis disconnect. And I want you to come over to the left where it says firmware flasher and go ahead and click on that. All right, so it's very important that you tell Betaflight what you have. I have an SP Racing F3. It's actually already pre-selected. And the drop down, it is selecting the most recent version. So that's good. I don't want to show unstable releases. So I'm just going to read all this information right here. Read the warnings. Read the recovery. 
and then I'm gonna come all the way down to the bottom where it says load firmware online and I'm gonna click it and now flash firmware is a selection so I'm gonna go ahead and select flash firmware so while the firmware is flashing you notice that we lost our red light we just have a solid blue at this point as it continues to flash All right, so it says programming successful. I come back here, I got my red blinky light back. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the computer and I'm gonna click on connect. And we're gonna get a screen that looks like this. Now, I want you to notice way down here in the bottom right hand corner, it says that the, my firmware is BTFL beta flight 4.0.6. So and it tells me the target, yada, yada, yada. So that's a good thing. That, that means that my firmware loaded correctly. If the last step failed for you, do not fret. We're gonna start soldering our board and we're actually gonna solder a couple pins in a place on the board called boot. Uh, that's the bootloader. What we can do is once we solder the pins in the bootloader, we can come back to this. We can put the jumper in the bootloader this is what a jumper looks like right here. And what the jumper does, I can't do it with what hand. We'll put the jumper on the boot pins and we will follow the directions very, very carefully and we will go through this process again. All right, so if you try to flash and it doesn't work and then you go and do this yellow part and go into bootloader mode, and try to flash and it doesn't work. That's where the Zadig utility might be beneficial to you. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put your uh, flight controller in bootloader mode. Mine has two pins that I can short using this little jumper right here, but watch what happens when I am in bootloader mode and I plug into my flight controller. I made a noise and I have a solid blue light. All right, so I'm going to bring over Zadig and I'm going to go to options and I'm going to say list all devices. And when I look at the drop down menu, I see CP210. And I believe that's because I'm using an older board, which only requires uh, the 210 driver. If you're using more recent technology, you're going to be looking for this STM32 bootloader. And apparently what you have to do is you have to be in bootloader mode. You have to select this STM32 bootloader and then you have to click here to reinstall the driver and then it should work fine. Now, if yours did work and I hope that it did, take your board and look at your screen and move your board, rotate your board. And as you rotate your board, you see that your quad is moving too. So that's kind of what we were hoping for. That basically means we've got a flight controller with updated firmware and it works. So now it makes sense that we go ahead and go and solder in all of those pins for our motors, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so what we're gonna do now is uh, go ahead and click on the disconnect button and then go ahead and take the USB out of your SP Racing F3 board. Okay, hopefully by now everybody is up and running with the latest version of the firmware whether it be clean flight or beta flight, and it's time to start soldering our flight controller board. Alrighty, so these flight controller boards, depending on where you get them, come with different stuff. This one happened to come with both the straight pins and the stick out the sideways pins. All right, so the straight pins effectively would look like this, and let me show you what the side pins look like. Okay, so my pins didn't line up exactly. It's something that I'm going to go ahead and work on off camera, but you get the picture. These are, these are going to come out the side. And based on the fact that we're going to have this piece hanging over, I'm going to go ahead and make mine come out the side, which is actually coming out the front because of that arrow. And the arrow is going to be facing the front of our craft. So that being the front of my craft, all of my pins are going to come out sideways and they're going to come out forward. Make sure you do it right though. They come out this way. If you see the black separator in the pins, uh, you can see to the right of that, all of the lengths are equal. If you put the pins in the wrong way, if you accidentally put it upside down, it'll look like this. You don't want to solder it like this because it is not going to work. Make sure you flip it around the other way and solder it the other way. All right, I'm going to my soldering board.
And it's time to start soldering pins. And I like to use the angled pins so that they come out the side of the quad. Or in this particular case, they're going to come out the front. So what I do is I just kind of poke the bottom end into a breadboard. Next, I flip the breadboard upside down. And I hold it with my helping hands. And now I can go ahead and solder. So soldering is definitely not my forte, but at least I got that part done. That's the hardest part. There's a set of doubles right there that I'm going to put in the boot. All right. So at this point, we should be all soldered up. And what we're going to do is pay particular attention to the arrow. That's going to be in the front of my craft. You can tell the front of your craft because with, that's where the camera stuff is. And what I'm going to do with my flight controller is I'm going to plop it right on top of my power distribution board. Last chance to check your polarities on your power distribution board. You want to make sure this is perfect because once you plug the battery in while it's connected to the flight board, you don't want to send 12 volts to the flight board. It will go poof. And we don't want to go poof. All right. So I'm going to double check mine and then I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to use my nylon screws and screw him down. And then we're going to get deeper into beta flight. All right. So we're starting to look kind of sharp here. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and plug that flight controller back in using the USB, this little guy right here. And then we'll call our attention to the screen and we'll go into the upper right hand corner and we'll connect. And now I want you to note that the quad is flat and what you can do to make yours flat is go up here to calculate, calculate accelerometer and click on it. And now if it's flat but facing it the wrong direction and yours is facing pretty much due north or pointed away from you, go ahead and click that button and you should have a reasonably similar situation. So if I take my quad and I pick it up, and I pitch it up. You can see that the computer's doing the same thing. Pitch it down. Computer's doing the same thing. Come back. Let me roll this way. Let me roll that way. And now let me yaw this way and let me yaw that way. So you can see that it's giving you an exact representation of exactly what's going on in real life up there on the board. All right. So bouncing back to um, calibrating accelerometer, you can see that I have uh, also calibrate magnetometer. And if you if I can call your attention to the four icons at the very top of the screen, the reason why I'm seeing four is because I have the deluxe board. I talked about this in the first video, the difference between six degrees of freedom and 10 degrees of freedom, or the six DOF board versus the 10 DOF board. All of these boards have a gyro and an accelerometer. The 10 DOF or the, or the deluxe boards add the magnetometer and the barometer. For people who just want to be racing FPV, um, then they're probably going to end up just flying in rate mode anyway, so uh, the magnetometer and barometer are not necessary, not for racing FPV. I want to take a quick look at the software now. I just want to kind of go through it real fast with you. So from setup, I want to go straight to configuration, and mine is a Quad X. And we're going to leave everything else alone for right now because we're going to get into this in deep in the next video. Uh, power and battery, we're going to come back to that. This page right here, we're going to spend a lot of time on, uh, making sure our receiver is doing what it's supposed to from the transmitter. This page we're going to spend a lot of time on, and this page we're going to spend a lot of time on. All right, so please join me in the next video where we're going to set up our receiver, and we're going to start wiring everything up. Please do me a favor, if you like the video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I've got Tons of content coming out, including this series. And I'm Steve signing off till the next video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, see ya.